Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Oklahoma City. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe in the booth with Randy Bueller and we're ready for the finals. There are only two left, 1,470 players started this tournament and we're left with Brian Brown doing plain twin. He's up against Zach Elsick who's playing that card, Randy. <laughs> He's got a lantern control deck that has kind of been the darling of our of our weekend is it really smoked everybody in game one excuse me in day one and has uh, found himself now in the finals of the tournament with relatively unknown deck in this lantern control deck randy explain to us how this thing works for people that haven't seen it go yet it's fundamentally an ensnaring bridge deck ensnaring bridge is a card that has been around for quite some time stronghold i believe was initially published it says you can't be attacked unless the attacking creatures have smaller power than the number of cards in your hand. So you get down to zero cards, you can't be attacked by creatures that have power. That's fundamentally the lock card that he's trying to set up. So he wants to dump his hand, and it happens that his whole deck is full of super cheap artifacts like Lantern and Insights. And then when he dumps his hand with the ensnaring and puts an ensnaring bridge into play, the key is being able to look at the top of the opponent's deck and being able to make sure that they don't actually get to draw any of their good cards. So kind of a crazy lock. Wow. Look at this. Extract extraction gets dispelled, but there's another one right behind it. So, so Zach just paying the Frexian mana for surgical extraction. Choose target card in a graveyard under other than a basic land, You've got to be kidding. He is surgically in a way... Misty his misty rainforest. rainforest, and he had it in his hand, too. No, no, he had two, <laughs> two in his hand. <laughs> he just surgical extraction wow. to take both the misty rainforest out of Brian Braun Dewan's hand. That is absurd. I've never seen that happen no, before. No, I haven't either. The thing is, he knew he should go for it again after <laughs> <he> Brian <laughs> <laughs> dispelled a surgical on a misty rainforest. Yes, once you get to the dispel, you know, uh-oh, something's up. That's insane. That's absurd. Now, if, if you look at Brian's <laughs> hand now, though, he still has Vendillion Click, a pair of lands here with the Sulphur Falls and a Cryptic Command. Yeah, in a weird way, Brian's a little bit lucky that he was flooded. Indeed. No longer flooded. But, yeah, those, uh, I mean, imagine if he'd had a normal three land draw. They were right. all Misty's. <laughs> So you can see it from the early stages here that Zach Elsick, <laughs> he doesn't play this thing the normal no, way. No, he's playing a different game of Magic. Exactly. And here we go, more Lanterns of Insight. Now what he's supposed to do here, though, is eventually get in his Staring Bridge, as you described a few minutes ago, Randy. And then also he's going to get some combination of Codex Shredders, right. Dual Caller Spells. Exactly. And he's going to use the fact that he can see his opponent's top card of their library and then he can use a Codex Shredder or a Bell to get that card into the graveyard. And he gets to then control his opponent's draw step, allowing him only to have the cards that are relevant. And when you have an Ensnaring Bridge out, a lot of cards aren't relevant anymore. Right, Main Zach deck Pithy Needle's a thing in this deck, too. Yeah, Zach just drew one, and BBD is going in with Vendillion uh, Click. Oh, wow. So Zach is going to sacrifice his Lantern and shuffle his library before he lets Vendillion click resolve. It is. You can fetch it with a Misty Rainforest. <laughs> yeah. Still a lantern on the battlefield. It's going to reveal the Tendo Ice Bridge here. And there's that ensnaring bridge. So Zach knew that he didn't want to draw another copy of Pithy Needle there, and if, if Zach, excuse me, if Brian was for sure going to take the bridge, which as it turns out is exactly what happens, he'd rather have a random card off the top that would go into his hand rather than a bridge. But there's another one. Cryptic Command Island in hand for Brian. And here comes Vendillion Click. And Brian Brondewin is content to just sit here and pass the turn back. He's the one with the clock and the cryptic command, so he can keep Zach from resolving that bridge. And it looks like Zach is just going to force the issue here. I mean, 
BBD doesn't really have a big choice here, right? He just kind of has to cryptic this. I agree. Yeah. And so does Brian. Draw a card. Going to find a Serum Visions. So Zach does not have his, we're going to call it a combo, set up here quite fully. He needs the bridge and he needs a, a way to interact with the draw step of Brian. And he, he's actually missing those two pieces. He just has the lantern going right now. So BBD off to a good start here. He's really kept Zach off balance. He's going to attack with Vendillion Click again. And as we know, Vendillion Click is a very quick clock. Yeah, and BBD is going to keep that remand on top of his library because that's just another turn. You know, like if Zach were to, to like reveal, let's say, an ensnaring bridge here. Nope, it's a spell skype. You know, just buy BBD a whole other turn, and now he's got even another turn after that. This is like a match where it's going to be pretty hard for Brian to combo off. I mean, so many different angles from which Zach can attack the Splinter Twin combo. Uh, yeah, but he's only attacking the Vendillion Click with those Ensnaring Bridges. The one of Vendillion Click. It's a very good draw here. And that certainly uh, was. Taking uh, away that second copy of Bridge from Zach has really let that thing rumble. He named Desolate Lighthouse with the Pithy Needle. Okay. And in comes the uh, Vendelian click once again. That thing might just go the distance. Oh, yeah. I'd say that's likely at this point. Now, we, we will see, though, that there is an Academy Ruins down there, right? Yeah, there's one hiding in, in that clump of land, so he can get back the bridge. And here he goes. So bridge goes back on top, draw bridge, play it. Even if it gets, let's see, does he have quite enough mana here? Yeah, he's even got enough mana that if he needs to, he can replay it this turn through a remand. There's the remand. Okay. And he says, sure, yep. you draw that thing. This goes back, and I'll just recast it. So now we have bridge uh, on yep. board. Uh-oh. That's two out of the three pieces that Zach <laughs> needs to uh, lock this thing up. I mean, Brian's capable of burning him out from seven. He's also Definitely. capable of bouncing its nearing bridge with cryptic command. Yes. But one of those things has to happen. With no cards in his hand, Zach is now immune to the combo. And Brian says, well, I'll, I guess I'll just run out my Deceiver Exarch anyway. Interesting. Zach is going to make Brian reshuffle. Does not want to let him draw a Snapcaster Mage. And, I mean, it's unfortunate for Zach that... He's failed to draw either a Ghoul Caller's Bell or a Codex Shredder. Yes. Lantern of Insight is not a very efficient way to deal with the opponent's draw step. No. You get to deal with a one draw step, and then you're done. Card has to be yeah. sacrificed. And, yeah, these next couple of top decks are going to be blind. Yeah, he didn't want him to let him have access to Cryptic Command again. Right. Which makes sense. I yeah, mean, it seems, I mean it seems like the right play. That's right. Cryptic, or, you know, Snapcaster for Cryptic, bounce your bridge is... Gets him to one. All right, so Zach gets to keep his bridge for now, and, of course, the Spell Skite that we knew about is sitting on top. Now, interestingly here, though, Randy, you know, he did have to use his Temple to keep him off of Snapcaster, but there's Academy Ruins to, sitting there again. So if he wants to get one of these things, these, temp these uh, Lanterns <laughs> back, he can just do it again. Yeah, Brian is just desperately digging while he can. <laughs> remand. <laughs> Three remands remand in again. <laughs> All right, how about the third time? He says, well, I still can do it one more time. Okay, well, Spellskite is another line of defense against one of the options that we mentioned before of sure. getting rid of the bridge. Now right, it is a card that can be targeted by Cryptic Command. Right. <laughs> now, he did have to tap out to get that Spell Skite down, so he's going to upkeep, <laughs> use his Academy Ruins, and he's going to immediately play it. Is he going to have to sack it right here to get that Snapcaster, or is he less worried about that now? This is up to Zach to figure out. 
he was pretty worried about it last time. I mean, does Spellskite, Spellskite's the new part of the map that's changed. Exactly. Maybe you're okay with Staffcaster providing access? No. no. Still too good. He figures, I'll just do it again. Mm -hmm. There's so many dead draws now for Brian Bronduin, he's just going to take a chance on a on a random card off the top being worse than Snapcaster, which it almost certainly is. Yeah. yeah. It was a land. It was just a land. Go. And once again, I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, he's just going to... Oh, he already put it there. Yeah. All right. So Lantern hh. hits the battlefield. Now a lightning bolt. How do we feel about that? I guess I with I this spell like sky, yeah, it doesn't sky. matter. Yeah. <laughs> There's that Snapcaster Mage again. It just keeps popping up. Because what Zach's really trying to do is is get a couple of draw steps here with, with this setup so that he can find a Codex Shredder. Right. And not have to use his draw step used on the uh, Academy Ruins. Right. And he's put it back on top immediately again. And he's basically built an engine that allows him to reshuffle Brian. It's skip your draw step, target opponent reshuffles the top card of their library. Right. Which, when you can see what the card is, it's not awful. <laughs> There's Desolate Lighthouse, which, by the way, is what Pithy Needle's named. Indeed. Which looks great now, because that would just have Brian, you know, churning through, looking for the few cards that actually matter. And there's one of the all-stars, gear per Aether Grid, on top of the library for Zach. This is a new, right? This came out in Origins. He didn't <laughs> yep. have it at the last GP. Yep. And this is a, a win condition for him and Indeed. also a way to keep really annoying creatures for him off the board. Mainly, we're talking about cards like uh, like Noble Hierarch, Birds of Paradise. These those are, cards those are can, zero power creatures. They can creatures. actually attack, yeah. Yeah, zero power creature can attack and then pick up an exalted trigger after the ensnaring bridge and checked and said, no, you're allowed. It's okay. Zero mm -hmm. power. No problem. You can attack. And I mean, right now, he can he can just start pinging BBD for, for two damage a turn. Now, there's a Splinter Twin, but uh, it doesn't seem to be a problem for him. <laughs> he's one, he's one uh, artifact away from being able to start pinging him for three a turn. It adds up quite quickly. And there's an Ancient Stirrings for next turn as well, which could help him find a Codex Shredder. Mm -hmm. Ghoul Caller spell, something to just, he just needs a way to mess around with BBD's top card of his library. There's a Remand, that's not going to do anything. Mm -hmm. Here per Aether Grid, hit you for two. You're down to 15, and the slow grind begins as Zach fully stabilized, and there's a Ghoul Caller spell. He's going to use his uh, Ancient Stirrings to find it at least. Let's see if that's what he ends up picking out of the pile. It is. Those go on the bottom. He can cast that, and that also gives give him gives him his sixth artifact, so he can start <laughs> using the gear for Aether Grid for three, assuming he doesn't need to use the bell or the opal on anything else. <laughs> this deck, <laughs> and there's a roast on top. I mean, roast can <laughs> kill spell spell sky. Sky. You might actually. Yeah, He's gonna get rid of it. <laughs> he finally found something he cared about. Well, two lightning bolts also kills a spell sky. True. He didn't grid there? I think he did. I think they just said it and wrote it down. Ah, gotcha. This deck is sweet. Kind of a swing and a miss with that copy of Ancient Stirrings. There's another one of his win conditions, the Pyrite Spell Bomb. Sure. He can curse that with the Academy Ruins. Right. Or? He can just basically skip his draw step for the rest of the game with the Academy Ruins and just do two to you. As it turns out, he's kind of already got this set up with the Gear Per Aether Grid anyway. So that's not like a critical piece at this juncture. He, he let him. He did let him have the bolt, though. Zach's at seven life, so he's f he's free he's free and clear of two bolts. Mm -hmm. And the first two will wind up pointed at Spellskite, I suspect, whether Brian wants that or not. Brian Brown doing trying to win Grand Prix number three. Yeah. Not in modern though, right? His other two were standard or standard legacy. Standard and low. Oh. That's like the hat trick, right? That's sweet. Yeah. Standard win, a modern win, a legacy win. That's the hat trick. He could bat for the cycle if he can pick up a limited. There you go. 
<laughs> now, the interesting thing here as well is that even if the shields were to go down with the spell skite and the bridge were to get taken care of, Zach can use his gear per aether grid to start just dealing with right. threats as well. Or, or just kill Brian. I mean, I think yeah, Zach I mean, wins this race. Definitely. Pyrite spell bomb, put it on the stack. He's but he knows that BBD has a romance, so he's like, you wanna mm -hmm. you wanna use it? <laughs> Gotta say Romand is not very good against Zach's deck. <laughs> All his stuff is so cheap. Resolves, go. Yep, you're gonna draw that land for the turn, Brian. And there's another lightning bolt. <laughs> Do they even start to get scary? I don't know do that he cares. Start to. He's, he's going to mill that away, but he's also because he's drawing a thought seize that right. he doesn't want. Hit you for one, two, three. He does have that opal down there as well. So BBD's down to seven. Like, this is almost over. Yeah, draw the opal. Turns on fourth Aether Grid activation. Yeah, he's, he's going to go ahead and... Uh, he's going to throw the bomb at him, too. So sure. he's at five now. And now he can put the bomb on top. He... Five. Yes. Yeah, so that's actually... I think we're done. Five. He hits him for two more. And that one did hit three. him, though, right? Because he's at five now, right? I mean, I think that's where it's on the stack, technically. And gotcha. Brian's trying to figure out if he can respond and accomplish anything. Yeah, then I down mean, to I three. I guess he can kill the spell skite and take him off of six artifacts. Put this back on Question top. Mark? Yeah, he's got it here. Draw this. Put this on the stack. <laughs> what a deck crazy is deck. Insane. <laughs> yes, this deck is insane. It did not look good either, right? Like, BBD had a perfectly reasonable start to this game. <laughs> Zach, which just had Lantern with no Nothing. bell. And he sacked it. <laughs> you he know, sacked the first two. Yeah, to get to keep BBD off a of Snapcaster Mage. Now he did manage to find an ensnaring bridge, kind of just he, No, he found Academy Ruins. It was like Right. He, he had the ensnaring bridge counter and taken away with a Vendillion click as well. And yep. he just he just didn't care. No, Academy Ruins. Yep. Academy Ruins beats that plan. How many Academy Ruins does he play? I didn't quite thought through I how think one? Two. Is it two? Okay. Two. So right now the Pyrite Spell Bomb's on the stack. BBD's looking at his triple lightning bolt hand here. He's got to try to do something. Yeah, time time to start making him redirect some lightning bolts, I think. He's just going to take the option away. I mean, making him play blue mana to yeah. redirect, actually. But although Zach might just say okay. So in response, though, Zach's going to be like, sure, but I'm going to ping you for one. <laughs> Using the Spell Skite. Remand that draw a serum visions that doesn't matter yeah and he's left him with with mana here but i don't think it matters anyway tap all of these and three you <laughs> and zach elsick wins game one ah bbd is gonna <laughs> have to concoct one heck of a game plan probably on the fly here coming into uh, the sideboard oh you don't games. think he had a sideboard plan ready for lantern control no i don't think he did i don't think anybody in the room did <laughs> i don't think so either you know what they will at the next Modern Tournament. Yeah, I think they will, too. So let's take a look. Now, that you can see that the players are being handed deck lists, and we've got some in front of us as well. I'm looking at BBD's sideboard. He's got a pair of Blood Moons. Okay. A, eh. lot, a lot of his cards are it colorless. Turns off, it turns off the Academy Ruins. Yes. I would bring him in. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't. there's not a ton of colored spells, but... Yeah, it, it's a little annoying because Zach still does have Mox Opals. And all of his other, you know, the colorless stuff to support it. He lost that game to Academy Ruin, though. Yeah. Academy Ruins. But, I mean, he can activate Academy Ruin. Oh, it just turns it into a mountain. Yeah, it's a mountain. You yeah. can't activate it. You get okay. the blue mana. So I don't care he, about the blue mana. So he takes that out. The blue mana he can still use on Spell Skite. He can still use his hand disruption spells. But he does have to get a Mox Opal going to make yeah, it, it work. Yeah, it makes Inquisition Thought Seize a lot worse. Not that they're great anyway. I mean, yeah. by that point in the game, by the time Blood Moon's down, they've already been played. I don't know. Maybe I would bring Blood Moon in. I wonder why the game... It's really the Ancient Grudges, right? Two Ancient Grudges is what Brian has here. Yeah, because then, even if they get milled, he still gets negate? value. No, Negate's good. You bring in a Negate into Ancient Grudges. What are you taking out? I don't think you want Lightning Bolts in your deck. 
I don't think. I mean, if you can get in some amount of damage with creatures and that's your reach, Snapcaster, Bolt, 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 I mean, it, it adds up. It's a lot of damage. All right, how about Dispel? Can we take Dispel out? Yes. <laughs> that I think go. he actually we found, found <laughs> the instant that's counterable in that. Uh... <laughs> oh, God. What was it he countered? The Surgical Extraction. There are two Surgical Extractions. You can't counter Abrupt Decay. That's the other instant in the deck. See, he managed to line up one of his Dispels with one of the two counterable instants in Zach's deck. It <laughs> still wasn't good. He only did it because he had stupid Misty Rainforest about to get knocked out of his hand. Two of them. <laughs> that was that game, by the way. Let's what rewind. What format are we watching, Marshall? <laughs> that game did not resemble any game we broadcast uh, all weekend, yeah. I don't think. Surgical Extraction, your Misty Rainforest. Counter it, sure. Surgical <laughs> Extraction, your Misty Rainforest. The other Surgical Extraction. Not that that actually mattered. Like, I don't think the fact that he lost two Misties. So I mean, it was annoying. I think it was clearly worth it to spell in a matchup where Dispel doesn't do anything. Yeah, as it turned out, he didn't miss a land drop, but... Yeah. Yeah, look, Brian's just staring at the, staring at the deck list. So, what matters? And it feels like the kind of matchup where, like, maybe Academy Ruins is a big deal and that's going to beat you a lot. Maybe it's just really a corner case scenario that you wind up losing to Academy Ruins, right? I don't yeah. know if you're supposed to bring in a card against Academy Ruins. I don't know either. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I, I got the chance to watch Zach play a few times in the feature match area and in, and in the side feature match area, and I did see him win two separate games with Academy Ruins just getting back Pyrite Spell Bomb. That was his win condition. Sure, but, I, yeah. but you know what? I don't care about Whatever, that part. I right? care about yeah. the get back my ensnaring bridge yeah. after you countered it with Cryptic Command. I right. care about that part. That part's super important. I mean, how does BBD beat Academy Ruins if destroying an artifact or countering an artifact isn't good enough? Right. I mean, so much of his plan here is destroying ancient grudges and counter spells that yeah I, I i stand by my first instinct which was bring in the blood moon you have to turn off academy ruin that said who knows like how many ways do you need to kill spell skite how important is killing spell skite to your plan well you can't combo kill through a spell skite right you can attack with flyers through a spell skite if you keep ensnaring bridge off the table but the spell sky also it defends the ensnaring bridge from artifact removal. It seems right? very important. Yeah, I would say killing a spell sky is probably yeah. very important. All to right, BBD. so you're going to have roast in your deck against the guy who has three creatures. And by the way, uh, Zach is going to be bringing in three welding jar here. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> so he is. Yeah, JVLs was thinking that this should be a good matchup for Twin. We were talking about it after the semifinal. Oh, he did. JVL, his first instinct was, well, twin, you just combo kill him. Like, you've counter spells, and how's he going to set up shop? And hmm. I mean, <laughs> at the time, my answer was, there's no way Zach Elsick top 16 to that previous GP and made the finals of this one without having a decent twin matchup. Yeah, I agree with that. And now watching it play out, his twin matchup actually looks quite good. Yeah, remember, Zach also plays six hand disruption spells in the main. He's got two Thoughtseize and four Inquisitions to help bust up any ways to find the combo or combo pieces. So, you know... Zach? He's even got Abrupt Decay. Yeah, the, the way that I, I, I like the way that his deck is built with inevitability in mind. And if you look at Zach's build, he has every angle covered on some level. It doesn't mean that it always comes together for him. Right. But he, there's, I haven't seen yet the game plan in a, any of these decks that he's going to face that is like foolproof against him. Right. He, yeah. he can grind through what he needs to grind through for the most part. Now, you know, because one of the first things that comes to mind is, oh, I'll play Shatterstorm against him. Right. I'll just wreck him. Sure. But then he's got the thought seasons, right? He, <laughs> he, you know, and not saying that he always has that, but, you know, you're, you're going to have to draw it. And you know what his deck's good at? Not letting you draw the cards he wants you to draw. <laughs> I mean. All right, quick mulligans from both players, both players here as we head into game two. Can BBD even things up and try to win his third Grand Prix? Or is Zach Elsick going to ride this lantern wave to the final, <laughs> to the trophy here? I don't know what's going to happen. What a crazy deck. Just when you thought Modern was starting to settle down a little bit, too. No kidding. Didn't it feel like people are kind of working out what the good decks were? You did metagame dance. This week you got to worry about Amulet. Next week you got to worry about Affinity. Yeah, it really did. <coughs> and then Zach showed up again. <laughs> Not a fluke. No, sir. Six cards apiece. Your standings are posted. I have this lovely microphone to let you know that your standings are posted. We 
to keep it. Keep it, gentlemen. We're keeping. All right, we are underway here. And uh, BBD is going to crack a land. It's going to come and play on tap. He's going to tap and play Serum Visions here. Get things rolling in his direction early on. Looking to win two games in a row against this Lantern deck. Try to win himself another GP. Finds a Snapcaster and a Twin. Puts the twin on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want that. And here's Ancient Stirrings. No, he's got the cool car, color spell right away. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> if you put that on top, I'm happy to have you put that right into your graveyard. He nice did, little he play did from blind Zach. Bill his own academy. Little, he did. He did. That, could, that could matter later. But he's happy to get any card that BBD wanted on top of his right. library off of it. So many I really nice little tiny interactions here right. that add up big time. I mean, what if BBD was digging for lands? <laughs> you know, he kept the one lander and thought, oh, Serum Visions, I'll be fine. And, you know, he milled the land away, and now BBD's just top decking for a land. You know, these things pop up. And you're just not used to people messing with the top card of your library like that. <laughs> All right, what did he find? A Black Cleave Cliffs? Okay. Yeah. Playing it. And he's got an Inquisition of Kozilek. So we get a chance to see what BBD's working with here. You can see he's already got a copy of Splinter Twin in his hand. Three fours. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Wow. He actually whiffed on this Inquisition. Two cryptics, a Splinter Twin, and two lands. But it also means Clearly that the should have let him draw clear. the Snapcaster Mage. Yeah. <laughs> I think we just see it on the battlefield now. If that were well, the case. yeah. I was kidding. You'd probably take 10 from it. <laughs> Wow, what a slow draw, though, for Brian Brondu. And I mean, the shields are down. If Zach has an Snaring Bridge, he can just slam it next turn. He is going to need to find a way to protect it from Cryptic Commands right. down the line. He gets but bounced eventually. Yeah. But he knows he's not getting comboed off without a really nice top deck. Oh, he hit it! Really nice top deck indeed. Now, he would need another to do it, but... He needs land, right? He's got one for this turn. Oh, no, no he got, does already got, have all the land. land. He's got four land. He's oh, everything. my God. It's everything he needs for a turn four kill. He could just win here. <laughs> oh, Zach has the thought seize, though, and he's going to see <laughs> that this it's is ridiculous. pretty timely. <laughs> oh, my God. BBD, I thought he had. Th I honestly yeah, thought I he too. just stole this one. I did, too. I guess you respond with uh, Pestermite here. Yeah, you just get it down. Get your clock on the board. Totally. I think you get in for a decent amount of damage before Zach can get set up. And it turns future top decks as one or two in the game. Totally. There was one on the bottom of BBD's library, He's but that thing's been instead. shuffled, so it could be anywhere in there. All right, now Thoughtseize is going to resolve. <laughs> you take the Splinter Twin. Got to take it. Cavern, Cryptic Command, Cryptic Command. Maybe Fester Mike can go all the way. Now, interestingly, Zach does have a Pithy Needle in his hand. Oh, interesting. He can actually Pithy Needle the Pester Mike, The Pester right? itself, yeah. Which turns off the Splinter Twin combo. Yeah. Splinter Twin gives the ability to the creature. Right. Now, he's decided not to take that line. And play a Graph Figure's Cage here. Turns that off Snapcaster Mage Flashback. Okay. What else does it do? It doesn't work for the combo. It does not turn off the Splinter Twin combo. I think it turns off the flashback of Snapcasters. It turns off the Ancient Grudge flashback. Yeah, it turns off flashback. Okay. So, yeah, killing, killing half Ancient Grudge, half of every Ancient Grudge hmm. is not bad. I mean, he must have had some cards that he just didn't want, because th that's not a huge effect. It, it, it does give, right. you know, go to his inevitability here, but interesting. Yeah, being able to mill an Ancient Grudge once you have Lantern information. Yeah. Yeah, and of and course, he's just blindly milling with the cool color spell. It's kind of a clock, right? Sure. Pithy uh, Needle. What are we going to needle. name? He could name the land again. He named Pestermite. Yeah, I would name Pestermite yeah, too. So this is his insurance plan against BBD top decking uh, a Splinter, Splinter twin. twin here. Now, Cryptic Command can bounce it. Yep. But yeah, it means like Brian this has to then take a turn to bounce it and set up. Serum Visions. Serum Visions finds a remand. 
a roast, and another Pestermite. Now, the Pithy Needle's only going to shut off activated abilities of the Pestermite, so it right. gets to keep clocking here. Yeah, no, I... Which just <laughs> looks like kind of like plan A here for Brian. I agree. Did he bottom? I think he bottomed. Uh, yeah, attacking with a Pestermite's got to be at least a little tempting. Yeah. All right, well, here's an Inquisition of Kozilek now <laughs> from Zach. So he just keeps finding these hand disruption spells. Does Brian even have a three he cares about? It looks like he does, because he's considering I mean, he's got a remand. He could just run that oh, out. Sure. He's going to do that. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, he also had Cryptic, but... but... I mean, this way he draws a card, mm -hmm. and it's an island. So now, he just when bricks. Zach replays the Inquisition, he misses one. Now, here's an interesting one. Does, does Zach bother? Yeah. Uh, no, he doesn't. <laughs> Is he going to play it? Well, he knows about the two cryptics. He only knows about the unknown. He doesn't know about the unknown card. That's his yeah, only. But it's off the top. Yeah, it's just a cold off the top, off the top card, and he doesn't replay it. I love it. Says, eh, it's probably nothing. <laughs> <laughs> also interesting there. If it were one of the two creatures, he could just cast it in response anyway, yeah. so he wouldn't get it. Well, Brian was down to two mana. Oh, he was down to two. Yeah, he's down to two. He had played us here in Visions. Right. Pirate yeah, Spellbomb killing Pestermite is relevant, though. So Splinter Twin is one of the two cards <laughs> that he's looking at. <laughs> Where do you put it? there's a Ghoul Caller spell. <laughs> do you top. even bother? You just go you top, top, top. Yeah, I like but top, top. Now Zach can go activate, activate. But at least... I mean, he kind of has to now, right? Yes. It was a Splinter Twin on top. <laughs> that Ghoul Caller spell is working overtime. <laughs> it's put a Splinter Twin and a Snapcaster Mage in the yard. Uh, <laughs> I guess he just has to activate it again here, right? I mean, if you put two cards yes. on top. He went this top, is top. A, This is a cool little mind Although game, the though. first one was a Splinter Twin, so maybe you think the second one is garbage designed to trick you? It could be. Whatever. So they give him a random card and make him draw a random card. I'd rather make him draw I agree the, bli you. the blind card yeah, than yeah. the one he scribed to the second. Yeah, just in case he's messing around. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, could have been two good cards. Yeah. And he's now Brian's thinking. He doesn't have a lighthouse, does he? No, he doesn't have a lighthouse. No, but he does have a cryptic. I suppose he, he can, can draw, draw if He can it's bounce active. draw. Yeah. Ah. He can bounce draw. I guess they were both good. I didn't see what the other one was. I didn't either. Wow, he's going to use a cryptic command. Now Google Earth Bell. We said it was doing work before. <laughs> now it's using up a cryptic here. Bounce your graph digger's cage. Is it ancient grudge? I didn't quite get a look at no, it. I still can't see it. And now the ability resolves. And now he's going to inquisition him. Sure. It, it was, was the lighthouse. It was the lighthouse. Desolate lighthouse. Okay. So that's going to miss. The Inquisition. And I guess he just replays the cage. Nothing to worry about there. He's got a lantern as well. Hello. Okay, let's take a look. Ooh, Snapcaster Mage. That's interesting. He chose not to play the lantern. He gold-colored belled the Serum Vision card. Because he knew about the cryptic command. He didn't want to play Lantern into untapped mana. Who Caller's Bell got yeah. Brian to tap four for cryptic. And the coast is clear. I can play my broken card. And now he replays Grafdigger's Cage. So the Snapcaster that he just drew doesn't just look nearly as good. I mean, there's no bridge. No. So, I mean, the 2-1 can attack. Yeah, yeah. No bridge, no academy. Now, there is a bridge in hand. It's his only card left. But he knows about the cryptic command. Yep. And I don't think he wants to play it into it. He's just going to shift the turn back. So now his job is to try to manage the draw steps of, of Brian Bronduin using just the Ghoul Caller spell and the Lantern of Insight. Uh, there's a Grudge. But like we said earlier, he'd actually just prefer to have that in the graveyard. Yeah, you let, you let Brian back. make his lighthouse decision and then, then show him that you're going to mill. Yep. This also gets a useless land off the top for Zach, which, which turned out nicely True. for him. Twisted image. So he brought in his anti spell skite tech here. Well, he's one of the main. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he left it. I forgot left about his that. His he, he left skites. it in, yeah. How many spell skites does Zach have? Three. Okay, there's one in the yard, I believe. 
I think Brian's unhappy to draw that. Or yeah, throw the 2 1 down. Look, all it does is attack. Unless you want to fight the Graph Digger's Cage. Right. Which is not really the scariest no, part. It, it costs him a cryptic command to get one Snapcaster Mage with flashback. Well, you also get to flashback your Ancient Grudge while you have the chance. That's true. It's not insane. And he does have a lot of mana. Hmm. <laughs> right. Who knows? Hmm. This is the kind of matchup you need to play half a dozen times yeah. just to really get a sense of what matters in these long games. Yeah, he doesn't have green mana anyway. Oh, okay. Never mind then. Yeah. All right. So. Zach says, <laughs> I, now that I see another ensnaring in bridge coming along, I'm just going to throw this You can counter this, this now. There. Would you like to? No? It's on the stack. I promise it's the only one I have in my hand. <laughs> He's going to counter it. <coughs> Activate the lighthouse draw and discard the land. He still has enough for Cryptic, though. Yeah, he wanted a little more information, I think, before he made, up his, made his decision. I had not quite picked up on how terrible Serum Visions is against Zack. Oh, it's so bad. Scry does so little. Zack has just wrecked those Scrys. All right, he let it resolve. He's, I think he just figured Once there's not going to beat the other one. one, yeah. An Electrolyze. Now, he's got Zack down to 11, but Snapcaster cannot attack here. Serum Visions. Draw the Electrolyze. He gets Karanos. to see that one, but not the second one. Karanos is nice. What does Zack do against that? Uh, yeah. Ghoul Callers Bell it into the graveyard? which Brian can respond to with Cryptic Command. Karanos seems Wait pretty a minute now. Good. Yeah, I'm <laughs> kind of looking at this. You know, Zach doesn't have anything going as far as actually ending the game. Right. And it's going to be a lot he of time. He can shuffle. So it's like Bell responds Cryptic, responds Sack Lantern to shuffle. Right. But then he doesn't have his Lantern anymore, which is a big deal. Not as big a deal as Karanos. Correct. Interestingly, um, BBD also has Twisted Image here as well that he can use to draw a card at instant speed. Oh, so can't You're kidding. They're going to have a four-deep stack yes. fighting over the top card of Brian's library? Yes. That's insane. Yeah, but you're right. There's going to be activations on activations here. <laughs> and it's only because that Snapcaster exists <laughs> that he can even do that. Snapcaster needed to be one, too. Sorry. These things happen. Another ensnaring bridge, and BBD says, yeah, right, you got it. And I think we're going to see a fight over Karanos here. Interestingly, all, you know, Pithy Needle does, can't do anything against Karanos either. Ancient stirrings. Yeah, Zach would like to have a cool colors bell, number two, in play for yeah. the fight that he sees coming. Is no. Spellskite is the one answer Zach has Yeah, he just put one on the bottom of his library. And he, he took, took a pithy, pithy, pithy needle over it. What does that do? Uh, I guess he's going to name the Desolate Lighthouse at some point here. Uh, all right. Yeah, but, but BBD has no... He can just say, I go to draw my draw step. step. I'd like to draw my Karanos, please. And he can make Zach do something. Wow. Just let him. Does he think Pithy Needle shuts off Karanos? It doesn't, right? No, it, it's, it's triggered abilities on, on Karanos. So That's what I thought. Yeah, no. Is this going to happen? Yep. All right. He just let him have it. Karanos. Let's see what Zach's plan is here. He's going to play a Codex Shredder. Can he shred all the non-lands so that Karanos only <laughs> ever... <laughs> <laughs> reveals a land card? That can't be the plan. <laughs> That's <can> aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of it. <laughs> Pithy Needle goes on the stack. Remember, he doesn't have to name it until it resolves. What did he name? Right, what does he name? I I'm assuming Desolate Lighthouse. Yeah. So I'm pointing to the land. Okay. 
I mean, he does have a lot of control over the draw step here with a Shredder and a Ghoul Caller spell. Does he really just get to shrug off Karanos and not care? Third spell in a row. All right. <laughs> He's going to be drawing a spell this time. Zach's at 11. Three to a creature or player. Bolt you. And now there's an Ancient Grudge. All right. The threats are starting to pile up here. This game's been great, by the way. I agree. N not your traditional <laughs> magic game, but figuring out how this thing's going has been really fascinating. Man, that Ancient Stirrings. I feel like you could write a whole article on Zach sticking with that Ancient Stirrings. Pithing Needle is the card he, just, he chose to prioritize there. Mm -hmm. All right, Electrolyze here for Brian. He wants to get Zach down to six. And he's going to make him shuffle. But in response, and this is what we were talking so about So the fight's before, over the Ancient Grudge. It ends up being the, over uh, the Grudge, yeah. So uh, now he has the Ancient Grudge in Is there still a Lantern in play? Lantern's gone. Shouldn't uh, have revealed that. Oh, no. He gets to shuffle because he shouldn't have revealed it. Is that what's going on? Uh, no, the the lantern. Oh, the was lantern resolving makes still. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. So it didn't actually affect much there. So we had the I want to draw this. No, yes, no. I really want to draw this fight, but it was over an ancient grudge, and Brian won. So ancient grudge in hand. Draft digger's cage still shuts off the second half of it, but being able to pull up an artifact is kind of a big deal. And Brian won it with his Twisted Image, so he's still got Cryptic Command. Right. I, I kind of like Brian's position. Every time I find myself saying that, though, Zach just True. finds a way. I still worth saying. New Lantern. Lantern's back. Brian is thinking. Is he going to Cryptic Command the Lantern? It's not crazy. He is. Cryptic Command. Yeah, the lantern is a big deal. At, like, totally. it's Zach's only way to control Karanos right now. Yeah. Three, you. You're down to three, Zach. <coughs> yeah. Next spell that Brian draws with Karanos is the game. And there's Chase. Architect of Thought immediately is going to draw a couple more cards. Wow, spell, spell, spell. <laughs> so we get some piles going here. Yeah, two and one. Two X arcs or it's win. Does Zach not know? There, is there a twin in Brian's hand? I think there is. There is. Which, But I don't think Zach knows about it. No. Oh, he did 3 0. He did 3 0. <laughs> this deck's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he split three zero. He wanted him to mill three, <laughs> and Prime declined. He did. Not only this did he. A, this is the craziest <laughs> game, and there's Vendillion click on your draw step. It's a land though, so he can't do anything with that, and the click can't attack through the ensnaring bridges. So I mean, it looks like BBD should be able to win this, but his library. I don't know. What do you think it's at here? Twenty still. Yeah, it still feels like it's twenty cards. I don't think he's yeah. in danger of getting decked in the it's short term. And with no lantern, yeah, this Zach, could be the game. Zach just isn't able to control Karanos. No, reveal. It's a spell. Three you. And you're down to zero, <laughs> so we get a game three. <laughs> that was so interesting. That Karanos, the, the, the god of storms. Yeah, the, the non-fight for Karanos. I mean, as it turned out, BBD could have still gotten the Karanos into his hand thanks to the twisted image, right? Because it would have gone mill that cryptic. Draw a card is, is what uh, Zach knew about. Yep. And then he would have gone, shuffle your library. And then in response, BBD had enough mana to say, okay, I'll, I'll switch my power and toughness on my Snapcaster. Yeah, he would have had to use his Cryptic in there, though? Yes, right? yes. I don't know. I feel like Zach, so Zach did that Ancient Stirrings. He could have taken an additional Ghoul Caller spell. But he instead chose to take the Pithing Needle for the Lighthouse. Yeah. Which, I mean, look, I believe him that 
controlling the lighthouse is better. Karanos is going to take a couple turns, right? And, I mean, he I think he expected to have a lantern in play. Brian was able to fend off the lantern and take away Zach's control over the Karanos. But, I mean, Zach clearly ch thought that controlling the lighthouse was more important in the short term than controlling the Karanos. Mm -hmm. Super interesting spot. And now, Brian Brown doing one game away from winning a third Grand Prix. How many people have won three GPs in the last two years? Right. <laughs> not that large. I'm thinking. I think Hain has. Yes, Hain for sure. Like, Owen's only got two? He's I got mean, two. only, quote, I mean, unquote. it was within a week. <laughs> yeah, that was a good eight it's days. It was a good, <laughs> good little stretch for Hold On there. Yeah, three. Brad has one or two. More top eights. Yeah, more top eights for sure, but come on, you come to a tournament to win this thing. Right? <laughs> top eight. You look at this GP. Brad only got not, only got tenth. <laughs> Slacker. <laughs> it's below his average for a stretch. Maybe above his average for modern. Yeah. All right. I cannot wait for this game three. Now, this match has been fun. This is so fun. Just about ready to hopefully have good, two good starting hands, and we get to see another sweet game like that one. Yep. Nope. Zach going down to six. Which he did last game. They both went to six last game. That's right. Looks like Brian's got a keeper. It's going to be on the draw here. Meaning that those early hand disruption spells from Zach can do some pretty serious work on the play here. Did you draw it or something? There's a turn where like I tapped out. I tapped out. I tapped out the cryptic just to draw a card in response to tell, right? So I could draw my lighthouse. Then you played lantern. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, which I mean, I could have played lantern before, but that wasn't gonna stop. Right. Exactly. Six cards. Thinking. Got it. All right, we're keeping. And he's got Grafdigger's Cage on turn one off of a Ghost Quarter. Passes the turn back. So BBD's hand looks safe for now. He's going to go crack a Scalding turn. He's going to get. Basic Island, sure. Brian probably happy that one mana artifact is not one that can muck with his scribe. But that's what happened last time. He didn't have it right away. <laughs> <laughs> so this is <laughs> already he has to start thinking, is he just going to go ghoul caller spell and screw up what I'm setting up here? You could also you could always run the optimistics and just say, yeah, he probably doesn't have it and set it up. I think you have to. Right? Yeah. I mean, you know, what are you going to do? Handicap your draw for him? No, you just assume he doesn't have it. I know a lot of Magic players that would definitely <laughs> handicap their draw <laughs> to play around a oh, come Phantom on, at least make him have it. I, I know. I'm with you. I'm just saying. <laughs> Fancy play syndrome runs deep. <laughs> Ancient stirrings. Yeah, you might still have it. There's a lantern, at least. He's also found a pithy needle. He's going to play the lantern here, it looks like. All right, so he gets to see what was scribed to the top and then decide if it's worth a reshuffle. Worth sacrificing his lantern for. Oh it's just a land. It's the lighthouse, though. It's the lighthouse, which Zach has a lot of respect for. Yes. But he's let it, he let him keep it. Oh, 
four serum visions. I think he sees a Karanos. Yeah, I think so. And a land. He let me have Karanos last time, says Brian Brown do Brown doing. That didn't work out well for Zach. No. This one would require a sacrifice on the lantern, though. It would. It's a tough one. All right, well, he's got Inquisition here to take a look at what Brian's working with. And Roast, uh, Electrolyze, Remand, and a Splinter Twin that he can't take. Right. Three lands, including... Depends on what his hand looks like, but... The Loot House. Feels like the Electrolyze is a nice target. It represents another card and some damage to go to Zach, but, you know, he could be trying to set up something for a turn or two where he doesn't want to let BVD have a remand. I mean, Roast answers Spell Skite. That's the reason maybe you take the Roast. True. Yeah, if he has a Spell Skite, he'll want to take that. He will take three. So, of course, he takes the one card we didn't consider. I mentioned it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's going to play the Spell Bomb. But this means that he is not using his Lantern, and Karanos is in hand for Brian Brondor. Maybe he's got a thought sees. Zach. Yes, there's one there. He will have one before turn five. He could draw it. Crack that spell bomb. That's true, too. Wouldn't be surprised if he just had... Ah, uh, he wants to get this bridge down. Nope. Bridge resolves. Go. Nope. Electrolyze you. End step. Draw that island. But like you said, he's going to have that thought seize next turn. So he's going to be able to fire that off and, and get Karanos, assuming that BB doesn't have a... Uh, well, now this is getting interesting. There's a Pestermite. Yeah, the Staring Bridge breaks up the combo. It breaks up the combo, so does the Spell Bomb. That can actually kill a Pestermite. So maybe the Pestermite just doesn't matter. I mean, not currently. Brian needs to draw more. He's like one Cryptic Command away from making it matter. Or even an Ancient Grudge. And there's a Ghoul Caller spell, so yeah, things are control. moving forward here. It's close, yeah. right up against it, but it feels like Zach is just able to stitch things together just barely fast yeah. enough. Yeah. He gets the Karanos one turn before Brian can cast it. Karanos? I assume this is Karanos. I mean, he didn't show a ton of respect for it last game, but yes. But it killed Thoughts him. It did kill him. <laughs> Thoughts he's your Karanos. BBD down to a twin and a roast with Pestermite on top of his library. But Ensnaring Bridge breaks up that combo and also Spellbomb. Yeah. Zach has a Ghoul Caller's Bell coming up. He can start to control Brian's draw step. And he passes it back, so he lets him have that. Make sure we reveal that top card, Brian. It's a Vendillion Click. Now, I don't think he cares too much about that. What, what was the last card in Zach's hand? Did you happen to see it, Randy? I don't know. I don't know either. This Desolate Lighthouse, though, is getting activated. And you know what? He's going to go Enough of that, yeah. Yeah, yeah Zach Enough. has a lot of respect for that card. Especially at a point where he even gets to uh, shuffle away and Vendillion click. That's interesting. Right, does Brian go get a land, or does he want to draw Vendillion click? I think he, he wants to draw Vendillion click. Wow. Hilarious. Even with the bridge out. <laughs> There's a Snapcaster Mage. Huh. Uh, I'll pass turn. It's an Inquisition. It's an Inquisition yeah. yeah. Ooh, Bell Bell. I can't believe uh, these Bell Bell. I'm like, oh my god, look what he's going to draw. Yeah. <laughs> How amazing for Zach Elzig. He's going to draw Ghoul Colors Some Bell. people run so well in modern, they draw Ghoul Colors Bell back to back. <laughs> okay, inside the draw step, Brian summons Vendillion Click. Just you get rid of the bell, right? I mean, facing one of them is hard enough. Facing two uh -oh. seems crazy. Still a roast in hand, though, for Brian Brondewin. Well, not for long. Yeah. I think we, ha we know what to take with this Inquisition now. Yeah, because yeah. Pestermite, Splinter Twin, why do I care about that? Get that roast out of your hand. Yeah, the Spell Skite breaks it up as well, and so does the bridge. <laughs> so does the Spell Bomb. Yeah. Only has three ways to stop the combo. 
And this way he gets to use up all of his mana here and, and pass the turn back with Bell and Lantern going. Snapcaster on top, though. He's got that Graph Digger's Cage, so yep. those Snapcasters do no effectively back. nothing. They're, they're flash two ones. That can attack. Flash two ones are not very good when your opponent has a staring bridge <laughs> and no cards in their hand. This is a true story. <laughs> Surgical extraction. <laughs> All right, well, here's Pestermite. And I'm okay. assuming this is on upkeep and or draw step. I think it's inside the draw step. Yeah, so he's going to tap down, well, I guess a land. Yeah, I mean, if he can take him off red mana for the spell bomb, I think he's hoping he can find a window where he can get his combo down and, you know, top deck some way to blow up the bridge. I think those are the sorts of lines Brian's thinking in terms of. Also, whatever, just get the Pestermite on the table. It's, I mean, Zach knows about it, and Zach knows he has a spell bomb. Right. Yeah, Zach was unable to deploy the spell scout. I guess there's also a scenario where Zach never draws lands or, or Mox Opal and actually gets stuck with cards in his hand. His only three mana spell is the bridge, right? Yeah, but if you tap spells and upkeep, he can't cast the two mana spells. Can't stop him from casting Surgical Extraction, though. Right. Frexian mana turns that on. But, I mean, you only need him to have two cards in his hand. You know what's funny? He, he's got Spellskite, and if they're still in Abrupt Decay, and then the Grid. Th those are his three different spells that cost more than one mana. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, Brian I'm just has a plan. I, Look, he's I, found... I, I totally get it. I'm not arguing. I'm just saying it's kind of funny yeah. <laughs> that that's the case. When you look at it, <laughs> his deck is super cheap. So, Zach just breaks up the combo yeah. there. Makes sense. And now he does get to play his spell guide. Slams it, too. And he's at 16 life as well. This, this is starting to tick down in Lantern Control's favor. I mean, he is looking it's to charting, be in a good yeah. position here. Zach's in great shape. He's just got the Surgical Extraction sitting there because he hasn't found a use for it yet. And how is Brian supposed to get through this now? It's you know, I got it. <laughs> there is a memory jar. Welding uh, jar. Welding jar, excuse me. <laughs> memory jar. You got excited <laughs> for a minute? His deck right? is not that broken. <laughs> It would be really good in this deck <laughs> <laughs> if you could ever cast it. No, but he's got a welding jar now for an insurance plan, and there's a Codex Shredder. So now all of a sudden, he's got Lantern and two ways to interact <laughs> with BBD's <laughs> top of his deck. And the interesting thing, of course, here is that now we take the list of cards that Brian has in his deck and we narrow it down to the ones that actually matter. And he has to end. And he has to have like three of those in a row, or ways to draw at instant it. speed twice in a row. Right. And these are not the cards that matter. Unbelievable. Zach Elsick is going to win the Grand Prix I with Lantern Control. He is going to win with this thing. Welcome back, Ensnaring Bridge. I remember you from long ago. Welcome back, me. <laughs> Welcome back, Ancient Grudge and everybody sideboard ever. It's not like people weren't ready to blow up artifacts. No, it's true. I it's mean, true. you'd think the splash damage from Affinity could keep this under control, but obviously it doesn't. No. It's not enough. No. And he wants to mill away that, too. Yeah, not only does he get to control Brian's draw step, he gets to control his own draw step. Totally. It's a He's big deal. It's just like whenever, whenever Brian has a bad card to draw, he just uses his manipulation to try to help his own draw step. It's true. Yeah, the Codex Shredders target him, and he can use those to manipulate. The ghoul caller spells are for both of them, so if it happens to be like a scenario like this where he probably doesn't want him to have cryptic command. Right. Nor does know. he particularly want to draw a glimmer void. Right. He could just use his ghoul caller spell here. Land, land. Now he probably <laughs> does want BBD to draw a land. No, he's actually going to ghoul caller well, spell. Well, his, his draw step is the next one. Yeah. It's like, he's all got right. time. I'd be okay with putting the land on top, but I want to draw something real. And this is just spiraling out of control. If you're in BBDs, I mean, I would be thinking about my deck list and thinking, what do I even have left in here? Right. He's got the combo in his hand, right? So he's basically the one in Snaring Bridge. Oh, the Spell Skites. Oh, never mind. He has to deal with, like, three permanents to win. Yeah, and by the way, there's another bridge just for more backup. And we've seen Zach pretty 
you know, he, he knows having multiple bridges matters, right? So he will often have two on the battlefield at once, which is just giving him more. I mean, he's got redundancy on top of redundancy here. He's even got graph diggers. Multiple and graph diggers. Cases. Hey, speaking of redundancy. Yeah. I don't see how BBD comes back from no. this. Zach Elsick's going to win this Grand Prix. <laughs> Lantern Control is going to take this thing <laughs> down. And he crushed this GP, too. It wasn't close. Undefeated okay. overnight. He did back into the top eight. He did lose the last round of the Swiss to, to Jasper's to the, to the red burn deck. deck. You're right, to the burn deck. And then uh, had to dice off on tiebreakers to get into the top eight. But then he avenged that loss. He did. By beating Jasper True story. in the quarters. Now he faces Brian Bronduin, an accomplished player. And Zach Elsick is just mowing through him. Look at this. He'll throw out a Deceiver Exarch out there. Still has that surgical extraction in his hand. He can cast it anytime he wants. <laughs> I don't care what you want to tap. I say you tap my spell skip. Hey, look, another one. What is he attempting to target? Could even see. Don't know. Not sure how much it matters. But that spell sky is super tapped down. DVD's going to get a shuffle off of his uh, scalding turn here. He's just going to grab that island on top. Uh, right. <laughs> it's weird. Okay. <laughs> Zach knows card. this deck, and he said, I do get to see the top card before you shuffle. <laughs> hey, you know, you got to play by the rules. Maybe he would see a uh, sideboard card he had anticipated or something along those lines. That is weird. Rarely enforced, yeah. <laughs> Rarely enforced. Okay. Good enough. Glad you knew that. This is where and now all he has to do is finish the job. It right. looks like, so right now he's got the scenario where he can start pyrite spell bombing and just bringing it back every turn. <laughs> that keeps his hand size at a virtual zero. He does have a card that he can cast at any time with extraction. So he can just start doing two a turn. I mean, he can also just deck Brian. He, he, he's done that too. Yeah, he can just start getting more aggressive. I don't know if I want to sacrifice 10 draw steps to win the game when I think I can deck him faster. A lot of options here for Zach, but all of them lead to a trophy. Zach's also watched Brian draw every card in his hand, right? So that surgical yeah. extraction can actually get, like, splinter twin, splinter twin, splinter twin. Mm -hmm. If that mattered, yeah, it could. If that mattered. Right? I mean, how crazy is this? Pretty crazy. Nothing matters. He's got the Graft Digger's Cage to shut off any flashback. He's got the ensnaring bridge to not get attacked by anything, including a million Deceiver Exarchs. And it looks like he's going to fire off the surgical now. Maybe Karanos, in case he's got an extra. He's looked at his list, does mm, he know? Cryptic. Oh, he's just going to get Cryptic out of here right That's now. The target. That's the target. Yeah. That's fine. Just have just one <laughs> Two Snapcaster Mages. And he can combo off twice, and it doesn't do anything. Nope. Two spell skites and two ensnaring bridges. After you deal with the two spell skites and the two ensnaring bridges, All right, now then you can combo. The only thing that gave Zach any pause whatsoever was two copies of Blood Moon there. Yeah, okay. He slowed down slightly on the Blood Moon. Okay. I don't know that they matter at this point, but th yeah, those are the only things he even... turn off Academy Ruins, yeah. but that's all they ever do. Everything else, he's like, nope. Not worried about any of this stuff. Yeah, it does get Dak does get the chance to see how Brian sideboarded. Of yeah, totally. He he now knows exactly which cards actually matter. And yeah, there's that Pretty those couple of ancient oh, grudges right? that uh, can't be flashed back. Yeah, twisted yeah, image, yeah. but there's two spell sky. It's just yeah. <laughs> there's that negate again. No attacks and spell cast turn. Go. Yeah. He's just going to deck him. I mean, BBD has to look at this. I mean, I, I don't really <laughs> see any reason to concede, but book it. Lantern control. Zach Elsick. <laughs> We've been calling him Lantern Guy all weekend because he top 16 to GP with this a while ago. Yeah, he wants to make a real name for himself. Now he's, he's Zach Elsick. <laughs> Grand Prix champion. Yeah, he's, I think you we're going to put that name next to him by the end of the day here. He's kind of obliged <laughs> to play the stirring just to get it out of his hand. 
Uh, but uh, obliged. He was going to give him another cool color spell. Yeah. Brian had to negate it. Yeah. <laughs> Snapcasters look so awful versus two craft diggers cages. <laughs> Chad is begging BBD to scoop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame him. No, I wouldn't scoop. Very little upside. I mean, unless you got like a dinner waiting for you or something. Uh, flight home. That Fli flight home. Scoop I would for flight home. Yeah. I might scoop for, you know, if we had a reservation. <laughs> <laughs> not just like I'm not, hungry. Not That's not food. good enough. If people were waiting for me. <laughs> then you're out of there. <laughs> Zach's just going to mill any spell at this point, it looks like. And I don't think he cares if he has a Jace. Like, he wants him to draw cards. <laughs> Yeah, I'm pretty sure Brian already missed his flight home. I saw Brad say, I hope when I land, I will learn that my evil blue mage is one with his evil blue cards. So. I thought we established it was a short drive to Roanoke from here. <laughs> you said it was a short drive to Roanoke. I said, Marshall, do you know what time zone we're in? What state? <laughs> What do you think? Should, if you're Zach, do you let him have Karanos just for a challenge? For a style point? Just to, like, you know, introduce a little drama into the end here? Just to prove that he can beat Karanos? <laughs> no. I wasn't crazy in game two. I can beat that card. Heck no, you don't let him have it. <laughs> Get rid of that thing in a heartbeat. So BBD's piled up <laughs> maybe if, three Maybe if fetch I put lands. my hand here, he'll forget what's on top of yeah, my Yeah, he's right just here. using fetch land activations here, but I think he should just fail to find here. Like, does Fine. he actually want to thin his deck out anymore? Well, he wants to shuffle as a response to Codex Shredder. Is that yeah, but you is? can just not find a land. Right. I, I, I think he just might not have a land also. He's got, what, like 15 cards left or so? It's not a, that, that not a thick it, library. That's what it looks like. Splinter Twin number three. That gets milled. Yeah, that was Snap the Codex Shredder. Snapcaster that does nothing. <laughs> Ambush Viper on top of the <laughs> library here. Yeah, this is Zach. DVD is going to continue to use up those shuffles. Yeah. And that's all they are. Yeah. I mean, look, he's, he's out of time. I mean, yeah. I don't think he expects this to work, but he may as well deploy all the resources he's got. Doesn't get to take any of this home with him. Down to 15. Brian does get to take home with him is six pro points and an invite to Atlanta. Quite the weekend. Yeah, a successful weekend, for no Mr. doubt. For Mr. Brown doing. Absolutely. Okay. Zach Elsick is also now qualified for Pro Tour Atlanta. Play a bell. And it looks like Which, by the way, that's the modern PT, right? Yeah. Lantern Guy just qualified for the <laughs> modern <laughs> oh Pro Tour with this deck. <laughs> <laughs> he shows up with burn. <laughs> Just no to get way. Everybody. <laughs> no. Totally show up with lanterns. Oh, totally. And now you see that he's kind of moved things into the yeah. quick mode here because he can just kill him in a couple of turns. There's another lantern as well. You may have that. And I think he's going to go mill, 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 mill. Yeah, here it is. That's six. Uh, six cards. And that's going to do it. Zach Elsick wins with lantern control. To a huge round of applause and a big smile. Well wow. deserved. Also, great job, Brian Brown, doing, like you said, qualifies. He was not qualified. He's using his uh, silver he's using invite. his silver invite on the next PT, so that means that he's now qualified for the yeah, first Yeah, this is PTs. how you string him together. Like exactly. I said, I mean, up-and-coming Pro Tour player. I will, I will be surprised if he hasn't strung together at least gold by the end of the year. I agree. In the meantime, there.